Daniel, if we can start with you. Last time you were in the press conference room, you were very emotional after winning in China. Having had two weeks to reflect on it, why did that win mean so much to you? Uh, I, I haven't had many, I guess. So, you know, they're still, uh, they still feel very special, uh, the wins. And uh, yeah, it was, I guess it had been a fairly long time since Baku. Um, you know, so it was a pretty long time between drinks, you know, the last win and uh, the whole weekend Saturday with the, you know, FP3 was another kind of head down moment. Um, but then to get out in qualifying and then how the race turned up, it was it was cool. A lot of, um, yeah, I guess just a lot of emotion, ha happy emotions for sure. But uh, yeah, the highs and lows of the sport can uh, can do that too. Good luck this weekend. Thank you very much. Nico, if we can come on to you. You've qualified seventh at every race since Mexico last year, and you've only been out qualified by a teammate once in the last 27 races. It's impressive stats. So let's start by talking about qualifying. Have you made a step in this area? Uh, I think I've just, you know, managed to, um, yeah, to hit to hit it on the head each time. I mean, I quite, you know, enjoy qualifying. I like, you know, getting out there when it counts and, and putting the lap together and. I feel, you know, the, the last 20 or so races, I also had a car, you know, that, you know, allows me to do that and that uh, gives the support that a driver needs also. And um, just since since last year with these generation cars, you know, when you have the downforce, you've got more grip to work with. It's um, just been a bit more fun and probably uh, helps helps the way I drive also a bit. Thank you, Nico. Good luck this weekend. Kevin, coming on to you, perhaps we could ask you about Haas. Do you think they can maintain their current level of competitiveness going forward? It's only been three races, but I think the car is obviously better than last year. And I, I prefer a consistent car, especially on the rear, that, a rear that I can trust and sort of depend on and, and predict. And this car has, has a good uh, consistency in, in that regard. So I think that helps, but you know, generally just being more competitive makes things easier. After watching the last race, we saw Kimi competing for Sebastian, not for himself. How do you work this eventually? You consider the possibility of Ferrari of being maybe the people ask you the same function as Kimi to work just for another driver, not for himself, being a world champion like him? Uh, wherever I may be or go um, is, is uh, yeah, I would always make sure that there was some clarity with that. Um, I would never go, you know, I wouldn't want to go somewhere where I didn't feel I had a chance because at the moment that's really what I'm chasing is, is to try and be, be world champion. That's that's my goal, my dream, and something I really believe I'm capable of. So, um, yeah, if someone said, we'll let you here, but you can't do this, then that's not an attractive option to me. At Red Bull, it's always been, there's always been really good clarity. Um, and I would say fairness, you know, since 2014, since I've been there. So that's been a, a certainly a nice environment, and I would expect that environment everywhere. How surprised are you that Mercedes didn't win this year yet? And do you think it might change this weekend? It, is it good for the sport? I think, you know, there's always been some some circumstances that stopped them from winning. Um, you know, Melbourne, it was a safety car in, in Shanghai as well. Uh, Bahrain, I don't remember, but, you know, I tend not to look at their race so much. But, uh, you know, I think they will they will get a shot at it pretty soon. They, again, have uh, one of the best packages. So I think just a matter of time. Yeah, I think it is a matter of time. But... Uh Obviously, it's, it is good for the sport, I think, to have, you know, that, that little bit of change for now. And, um, but, yeah, I don't think it's going to be necessarily a trend. I, I, as, as Nico said, I think it is a matter of time. They do have a fast car. They do have uh, certainly a good package. So we'll try to keep holding, holding them out as long as we can. But uh, for sure, I expect them to be strong really every, every weekend. The three of you have got a better start of the season than, than last year. Does this give an amount of confidence, a boost? Yeah, definitely. It's a much better feeling uh, getting off um, the start of the season better. Um, so, yeah, I would say the answer is, is yes. It's a, it's a nice feeling and it, it's more fun and enjoyable and easier to look forward to the race uh, when, when you know you've got a, a good car and, a, and can fight for points. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's you know definitely fun if you have a, a good couple of races and straight away, you know, you get a couple of... Uh, points and good results on the board for sure that helps you know uh, yourself but also you know the whole team um, all the people you know that are working hard back in the factory you know puts the spring in their step and just you know helps to create a, a good atmosphere um, and motivation inside the team yeah I mean there's a lot of people 
back at the factory and for them to yeah have that kind of motivation and that drive um it's a long season and to get that kick started early with some results is is really important Bahrain was only two races ago for you guys are you worried about reliability um I don't I don't want to use the word worried because at least from my point of view I, I just got to drive the car and you know, it's it's in a way out of, out of my control. But uh, so I'm not going to drive around worried. Um, you're going too fast and too focused to to be worried. Um, but yeah, I guess right now I'm not really in the short term. Maybe once we get later in the season, uh, it's it's likely we'll we'll come across some penalties or whatever. But uh, right now I'm baseline chill.